is the Chad and Jesse Poker Show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Chad and Jesse Poker Show. Number six, Jesse. Number just six. Like, just like Sean Deeb, dude. Six bracelets. Six bracelets, six episodes. Let's go. We're going to talk about that in a little That's bit. Really well. But I want to tease our guest for this episode, Jason Kuhn. One of the biggest That's names in tease. poker. That's not a tease at all. Yeah, I guess that's not a tease. A reveal. <laughs> that's a reveal. I'm just so excited. He's really big and popular. <laughs> I already said his name. Gotcha. He's got like $48 gotcha. million. Dollars. He was here today for the $250,000 <laughs> buy-in tournament. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it was quite the interesting experience because <laughs> I had to wait for him to register the tournament before he, you know, he could uh, come here. Yeah. And, uh anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that later. <laughs> it was fun. It's a whole different stratosphere that these high rollers are operating on. You, it it, really it, it, just like you and me, they just have a backpack that has more money than I have in my bank account. It's, yeah, Period. it's crazy. Period. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, we've got a lot of other topics to talk about. And right off the top, we want to say congratulations to the Las Vegas Golden Knights who won the Stanley Cup in the NHL, Jesse. Yeah, I don't give a shit about poker. Oh. I, don't poker. I don't give a shit about <laughs> hockey. I care about poker. Fuck hockey gears. I, I caught Golden Knights gear. fever. And one guy who does love hockey is Daniel Negreanu. Yes. And he went to that game. He went to the Stanley Cup Finals game five. And Daniel doesn't drink much, but he did there. And he, he drank a lot. Yes, he did. So if you haven't seen it yet, Daniel's day 15 vlog is one you must <laughs> find. Let's let's ramp up those numbers. I mean, my goodness, it's uh, Daniel's vlog. Anyways, is a must watch all every summer. Yeah. I love it. He gives a great inside love. Love his the way he does things. It's just fun. Daniel's a good guy. But my goodness, this one, Chad, he he did not put the camera down, and he went to the game. Knights won, and Daniel had it feels like what a, a drink, like a shot every goal or something. And wait, wait, they wait, they scored Knights nine won. goals. <laughs> yeah, so that's a lot of drinks for Daniel, and he was showing it here on site at the World Series. Yeah, so he was at the game with uh, Josh Arie and uh, Eric Wasserson and and some other folks having a good time. Obviously, their team won, and and then they walked the strip back and stopping at the Ario. Dan Smith was there, Scott Seaver, and everyone. You know, they were liquored up good and having a good time, and it was fun. And and then uh, Negreanu came and late registered the Raz, the 10K Raz tournament. And it was immediately sitting down and just, you know, in his mind was the life of the party. I don't know if in the <laughs> eyes of the other players was. Well, we do know because we watched the vlog. It was, yeah, it was a little spicy. Yeah, it was a little, a little spicy. spicy. And I was really excited to see the vlog the following day because you know that, man, he's going to have a hangover pretty bad, right? Yes. And it, it, he did certainly, you know, he spent the night at the WSOP. He, he's got a room here, which is is nice for him. So he, he doesn't have to worry about getting back and forth home. And then woke up and was like, oh man, my vlog is 55 minutes. These things are usually 30 minutes. <laughs> and, and then he filmed himself doing the apology tour, if you will, and the RAS, because he made man. day two. So, you know, oh, sorry and what have you. But I think it was all in good fun. He doesn't drink too much. The Stanley Cup was just won by the Las Vegas Golden Knights. He loves hockey. He loves the Golden Knights. He's a sick season ticket holder. Yeah. And so he just let loose. Yeah, this isn't a Daniel be a better example. That's all we're doing here. My God. <laughs> and we're saying that was fun to watch. It was fun. Yeah. Again, another another good chance to see the real side of a, of a player that we all love and we all have followed for years and years. And Daniel keeps it real, man. That's what he does. That's he it. That's wears it. his heart yeah. on his sleeve. And he's not afraid and to show it because, he's no. like you said, he documents it in these vlogs, which, yeah. as he says, is a must watch. I watch them. Every summer, every episode, he's doing them daily, which is a lot of work. But uh, he just shows you the good, the bad, the ugly of poker. You know, you win, lose with him, ups and downs. Uh, it's it's a hell of a ride. True, true, true. Speaking of the ups and downs, he's kind yeah, of... Well, well you know, let's first, Daniel is, uh, you know, of course, he's in the running, quote unquote, for the player of the year. Chad, where is he at on the list? Yeah, I was going to say, that's the part of the down. He's 96 Yow, as of the yeah. updated standings. Today, it's never too uh, late. Seven hundred and thirty-seven points, and the leader right now, to put that in perspective, has oh. almost twenty-four hundred. And last time we checked on this, of course, it was the only person who's won two bracelets this summer. Chad, Chad, Chad Eveslish. Eveslish. I, I got scared <laughs> the way you pronounce it. Chad E is always what I go yeah. with. But um, but guess what, guys? We got an update. Actually, this story, this is breaking because they updated while we were getting yeah. ready for the show. 
Chad ain't on top anymore. Which is quite shocking, I Somebody think, to a lot of people. time, probably, right? In the bedroom? No, <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh. 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 Keep going. I have no words. Keep going. Yeah. So he Keep has 2,217 <laughs> points, two bracelets this <laughs> summer, but two people have overtook him. Sean Deeb, who we mentioned at the top of the episode, won his sixth World Series of Poker career bracelet. He has 2,323 points. So he's up a little over 100 points on Chad E. Yep. But they're both behind a guy who I think might surprise a lot of people, somebody I've been very familiar with thanks to my time on the Mid-States Poker Tour, the MSPT. He's out of Minnesota, Ian Matakis. He won an online bracelet this summer, his first, but he's also been crushing it, making a lot of deep runs, and he's actually on top right now. He's 60 points ahead of Sean Deeb with 2,388 points. So just kind of a shocker there. I think we all thought, wow, Chad E won two bracelets. He's going to be atop the leaderboard, uh, or at least for a majority of the summer, but that's not the case right now. He's, uh, you know, he's... He's, third. Yeah. So Ian's got eight caches. I'm counting right now. I think it's eight caches so far in the summer, which is wild to think. I mean, we're only just over two weeks into the series and he's got eight caches, but it's sneaky because three of these are online. So yeah, online event number one, he came in 30th for 2K. On the event number two, he came in first for 120K in the bracelet course. And then online event number four came in fifth for 38K. So those amongst their five live caches amongst the series, that's a nice sneaky way to climb up that ladder and just slide on by people. Um, it's pretty wild. Pretty wild. Yeah, I'm happy for Ian making a name for yeah. himself. Those of us in the Midwest have known who he is. He's been a crusher for a while. Uh, and here he is showing off his chops at the World Series of Poker. Josh Arie, currently in fifth place. Uh, he won a World Series of Poker bracelet this summer. 1,800 points. You have the Tyler Brown, who won the Mystery Bounty. Uh, had another final table, I believe. Uh, almost 1,800 points. John Monette, who we'll talk about later in the episode. So it's it's actually quite tight. It's uh, closer than we thought it was going to be, and we're only a couple weeks into this World Series, so it could be a, a fun race this summer. No doubt, no doubt. Well, before we move on to our Call in the Clock segment, we got to stop, pause, and say thanks to one of our sponsors. I'll take this one, Chad. Global Poker, I say every time. I'm a big fan. I play on there. And uh, it's time for the Grand Prix Turbo Series, Montreal Edition. They do these really cool uh, Grand Prix Turbo Series uh, with uh, in line with other F1 races around the world. And so this weekend, there's a, another race. So that means we got three days of super crazy hyper turbo events on both the gold coin and the sweeps coin side on Global Poker. Um, if you're looking at sweeps coin sides, it's SC11 for every one of these 12 events, including a 50,000 SC main event um, deep hyper turbo. So it's that's going to be a deep stack hyper turbo. Definitely worth checking out. If you go play on Global Poker, it's your first time. Use code Poker News. You'll get a special gift from us, the Chad and Jesse Poker Show, and our friends at Global Poker, of course. Check it out. The Grand Prix Turbo Series starting today, Friday, running through Sunday. I want to win one of these trophies. I know this is the rattlesnake one. It's never going to happen. I just want I know. It's, it's never going to happen. You've already got a bracelet. You've had enough. It's time for the rest of us. <laughs> Settle down. Well, we've got some great topics on the board this week, Jesse, for the calling the clock segment. Yeah. And so I think it's just time for us to not even bullshit around. Let's just go ahead and get started. All right. Topic number one, we got the Texas Poker Bill, Chad. And yeah. this is something crazy off Twitter. I'll let you jump in. Go ahead. Yeah. We have been keeping an eye on the Texas poker market or live Texas. The state, the Lone Star State, not Texas, Holden, what have Yeehaw. you. In Texas, uh, we went on the road trip, and uh, was it 2022 in March? I have no memory yeah, of anything. Visit, visited a bunch of these rooms. Well, there's been an effort by Doug Polk and other operators of these card rooms in Texas trying to push through some legislation to make the industry uh, not operate in so much of a gray area, you know, make it a little more legitimate or what have you. But the latest poker bill that they were pursuing to help in that endeavor died. Uh, Doug, tweet, uh, Doug Polk tweeting, uh, sadly, a couple weeks ago, our bill, uh, Poker Bill 2345 officially died. We passed the House, but ran into fierce anti-gaming opposition from powerful people and could not overcome it. This was the furthest a Poker Bill has ever gotten in the state of Texas. Good sign for the future. Doug did follow it up with another tweet a few hours later saying, to clear, some, to clear up some confusion here, Poker is still legal in the state of Texas, and the Lodge will continue to operate. This bill would clarify the language of the law for poker. All we want is a more clear framework for which to operate within. Status quo continues on. Yeah, it's disappointing, but not <clears throat> yeah. surprising. It's, a, you know, it's politics. It's bureaucracy. You got to do lobbying. You got to really, you know, grease the right wheels and whatnot. And I'm from Texas. I'm from Houston originally. And I played poker in the underground rooms out there when I first started back in the early, early aughts, whatever we call it. Right. And man, it's just been a thing where we're like, 
let's turn the Astrodome into a casino. Oh, everyone wants this. However, no one will let it happen because there are casinos in Louisiana, casinos in Oklahoma, casino, I mean, they're all around us. And so the people who make decisions just say, you know what? No, you can't have this. Yeah. Such a tough market, man. Such so, so, so tough. The silver lining, like you said, this is the furthest a poker bill has ever gotten in Texas. The yeah. other thing is, is this market is continuing to grow. There's a th probably thousands of jobs tied up now in these rooms, which is going to be hard for politicians to come and say, no, we're going to put all those people out of work. Okay, well, it's time to move on. Ben Lamb crushing the soul of Johnny World. How <laughs> great is this? If you didn't, if you didn't miss, if you missed out last time, let's catch this up real quick. Johnny World goes to the table. Thank you, David Williams, for catching this and telling it on Twitter. Um, but Johnny World comes over and says, "Hey, buddy, we have the same starting stack. What a good time to swap one point five percent." And um, Ben Lamb says, "Snap, yes, absolutely." He holds out his hand to accept it, and then Johnny World just starts laughing and says, "Lol, no, nah, I'm good," and just walks away, leaving his hand up. <laughs> Felt so bad until our boy Ben Lamb takes down the bracelet. Top prize. Chad, how sick is that? Yeah, $492,000. Johnny World finished like in 12th or 13th place for, I don't know, 26K or what have you. So Ben Lamb getting the last laugh here. And I, what I love more is he's leaning into it now. Okay, yes. Not only that, and that's, we even have it titled right for the show. Ben Lamb has issued a challenge to Twitter. Since Johnny World got me so good, since he burned me, I'm now offering $500 for the best Johnny World needle for the rest of the summer. So, Chad, let's let's try out some things. Oh, God. Okay. You must have one in mind. I don't. Oh, no. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, you, do you have anything? I don't really. I was th actually thinking about it the other night because I'm like, man, I'd like to get a free 500 bucks. No shit. No shit. Absolutely. Yeah, but I just don't Please. know. Like, you got to do something with, I don't know, how, who could you confuse him with? Like, burn him somehow by confusing him with, I don't know. Like it's, it's a tough one. I mean, I'm thinking about like delivery services. Let's send him some, some bullshit. Who oh, knows? okay. Or like, okay. Like, so he would have won. What was, it? I think it was like 7,000. You want to, you want to do like a public embarrassment thing. Like you did to me in the Mexican restaurant that one time. Okay. Which well, has, okay. <laughs> we don't have time, to get into that. Yeah. This. <laughs> there was a mariachi band and sombrero and Chad got mad. It <laughs> was wasn't good. It wasn't good. Um, but yeah, no, I want something. I mean, let's do something to, I mean, it's five hundred dollars. We have to earn it. We have to earn it. Maybe, so. maybe we'll try a few things and we can record it and put it in the show because, we, and then we win five hundred bucks and we can do a lot of things with that money. We'll see. Okay, so we talked about Phil Hellmuth and Daniel Negreanu last week, and uh, you know they've had some some uh, challenges in the first two weeks. Yeah. However, as soon as we freaking said something, Chad, what do they do? They go on a tear. Yeah, it was an interesting hair. Thursday yesterday uh, when, as we're recording this because both of them were going deep in two tournaments. Uh, Helmuth was going deep in the event number 35, the $10,000 secret bounty no limit hold'em, which is just a fancy word of mystery bounty. I guess the WSOP wanted to put a little spin on it. Uh, whereas Negranu jumped into the 1500 pot limit Omaha massive mm -hmm. field and ended up making a deep run in that. Unfortunately, both just missed out on their first final tables of the summer. I mean, just missed out. Negreanu finished in 16th for 10632 in that $1,500 buy-in pot Omaha. And Helmy finishes in 11th? I mean, come on. How sick is that? 11th for 45301 plus the bounties. He pulled a 50K bounty and a 5K when he pulled two. I saw in a row on Twitter. I mean, sick runs. But gosh, they're getting so close. Yeah. And it's interesting. Negreanu said in his vlog that he is feeling very confident in his PLO game, which is why he opted to jump into this $1,500 buy-in event as opposed to some other stuff that was running yesterday. And then he finishes 16th in a field of 1,355 runners. Like it's, it's kind of ironic. Negreanu's best performances this summer thus far has been in the bigger fields, which just is a little different for him. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, um, I think that they can both still take down at least one bracelet this summer. But uh, we're almost near the halfway point. How close are we to the halfway point? Uh, like five days away or so. We're, it, we're getting, we're closing in on halfway through. It, so. it, it's a shame Helmuth just missing out on the final table no because kidding. it's an electric atmosphere. When he's at a final table and has a shot at that record extending bracelet, it just, it changes the whole atmosphere. I know that the TV production loves it. I was walking next to Poker Hall of Famer, Maury Escondani. Come on. Yeah, we, we all were rooting for Phil then that one. Yep, no kidding. So... We've seen the hand. I'm sure you have aces, kings, kings, queens, thanks to Kevin Martin on Twitter. Let's show the clip. Here at the World Series, we just had kings versus queens versus aces versus kings. Queens flop a set and then aces river a set. What? What is this deck? How many? How many? How many powerful cards are in this deck? What is this hand? Unbelievable. 
Unbelievable. I mean, Jeez, yeah. man on the river. It's got to be like hand of the year nomination uh, for this one. You just, uh, I mean, I may, maybe, maybe. I don't know. It's, definitely, it's definitely up there. Some of their, the, the quad, flopping quads and uh, the royal flush or the straight flush is my, true. one of my favorites. But this one is still how, cr- how soul crushing, how soul crushing. So let's just talk about aces, kings, kings, and queens. The kings are just stone dead. So, I mean, unless a straight happens miraculously, maybe. But right. queen on the flop, <clears throat> queen on the flop. So now aces are just, well, there's a queen and a jack, yeah. right? Uh, so no, had, there's a, so there's a queen six four rainbow flop oh, okay. jack on the turn. That's where it came. So in. at the on the flop, the worst hand takes the lead, right? Yeah. You all of a sudden you're leaving. The two kings are drawing dead <laughs> yeah. at this point, so they're very unhappy. And yep. Tai Wei two, he's the guy with aces, so he's in this great spot. He has aces, thinking he's going to win this monster. All of a sudden he goes from you know from top to now he's way behind and drawing to two outs. Man alive! And there you go. Of course, it has to be the river. Has to be yep. maximize the drama. So, yeah, I mean, what's great is that hands like this do happen, but they often go unreported or uncaptured because, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of hands are being dealt at the World Series every year. But at this particular table, even though he wasn't involved in the hand, Kevin Martin, who, of course, is a GG poker ambassador and just a, you know, a a media beast, social media beast was there and was able to capture it, which makes it all that much more special. Yeah. I mean, it's a crazy hand. So sad. It's going to happen. Hopefully, uh, you still have some more bracelet events you can play in, and uh, good luck next. You usually one. see it online. Yeah, no joke. <laughs> All right, let's go with we got we got a potential runaway uh, WSP.com Player of the Year here, man. Yeah, speaking of online, and we, it's someone we know. Yeah, this was interesting. So Mike Holtz, aka Brock Lesnar, online on WSOP.com, he won the 2021 WSOP.com Player of the Year. Just crushed it on the site. Kind of took some time off in 2022, and now he's back in 2023. We actually caught up with him. He was at a final table in a live event here at the WSOP, and I was chatting with him, and he basically said to me, he was like, yeah, it looks like I pretty much got the WSOP.com Player of the Year locked up for 2023. So what are you talking about? It's <laughs> it's June already, right? And he said, yeah, I know. Like, And I'm like, what's the situation here? Apparently, he had put in so much volume and had so much success and still plays such high limits, that, it, and he's got such a lead right now that it's not impossible, obviously. He said it would have to be catastrophic, though, right. for him to lose. Yeah, if he continues the trajectory he's on, he's just going to run away with it. And I mean, right now... Look at the top 10 names. You know, these are, we're not going to reveal real names, um, but the Brock Lesnar is up top. I, Chad, you and I did some commentary together back in 2020 during COVID uh, with some of the online bracelets. And I see a lot of these names who I remember, like Pollux, Panoramic, mm-hmm. Art Vandalay, Mr. Larry David, Yol Romero. Like these are some names who are in here who are, are crushers who play those high stakes bracelet events and et cetera, et cetera. So um, I know I can reveal wild. one because it's publicly out there and panoramic is Tony Dunst, yeah. WPT commentator, sixth place right now. Yeah. But to put that in perspective, he's got uh, 25,500 points. Uh, Mike Holtz is up at 38,000, 8,000 point lead over second place. And from just based on what he plays in the amount uh, it, it, it's going to be hard to stop him. And so for him to win, if he does the WSOP.com player of the year twice in three years, uh, that's a heck of an accomplishment. He's a bracelet winner from last year and a three-time circuit ring they call, winner. They're calling the Sean D this thing. He did, even did a documentary on his like summer. Yes. Check it out. His documentary is sick. Yeah. All right. You go ahead, Chad. John oh, Monette. John Monette. Used to be Angry John. That's yeah, what he that's was right. known as. <laughs> then he settled down. He got married to Diana, a girl I used to work with. Uh, they started a family. I think they have uh, two kids, maybe more. And Angry John became, I don't know, Family Man John. But that didn't stop him from playing poker. And he recently won his fifth WSOP bracelet in the 1500 triple draw event. Came with a top prize of $145,000. Uh, it was, I think it made him the 35th player in history to win five or more bracelets, which is a heck of an accomplishment. Yeah, this one was the $1,500 limit deuced to seven triple draw. And for me, I was watching this because Tana, Tana from, Tana Run, from Good. Yeah, Run Good. Yeah, he was he was making a deep run. And I love Tana. I love Run Good, of course, to support it. So uh, I was paying attention to this to keep track of him. Who else was in that? Wasn't that the one that Kessler... Yeah, Kessler just missed too? out on the final table. <clears throat> yeah, it was that was a lot of fun watching Kessler in that too. But uh, I mean, what's crazy about uh, angry, not no longer angry John? We'll say like casual John. I don't yeah, know what we're doing. <laughs> but uh, John's five bracelets come in all games that don't have no limit hold'em attached, to, which is for me crazy. He wins his first one in uh, 2011 in the 2500 eight game mix. 2012 the seven card stud. 17, it's another deuce to seven low ball draw. 
Then 2021, he wins a limit hold him close, but there's no in in the front. The best game, the the what, what do you call it? the Cadillac of poker? Yeah, the I'm Cadillac of poker. <laughs> Real quick, Angry John story. Last year's WSOP, we're in the parking garage. They have the gate. A car just couldn't figure out the money situation. I was stuck behind him, and there was a car behind me. Turned out it was Angry John behind me. And this guy was stuck. Uh, he was at the gate. He was you know drunk and belligerent. And Angry John gets out of his car and he starts walking towards the guy. And I thought, oh my gosh, Angry John's going to come beat some ass let's or go, something, let's go. right? And then John actually was just trying to be a nice guy. He was bringing his diamond card up or seven stars to try to pay for the guy's parking. The guy got angry at John, and John just turned and walked back. Okay, well that's fun. Let's go with the 50k PPC starts on Sunday, guys. Chad, of course, you and I both love poker. I love the history. This is one of my favorite events of all summer, besides the main event, to watch. How about you? I mean, yeah, it's a- it's such a, a historic event. Started in 2006 when it was won by the late, great Chip Reese. Yep. And they've named the trophy after him. This was, it started off as a horse tournament. And now it's uh, played in the eight game format. But it was to really crown, look, you have the main event, you have the No Limit Championship. We need some sort of equivalent for the mixed game players. Yeah. And this was it, and it still is. It's such a prestigious tournament. Uh, if you look back at some of the winners, some of the biggest names in the game have won this thing. Yeah, as I mentioned, Chip Reese, Scotty Wynn, Brian Rast. Michael Mizraki wins it twice. Three. Three, that's three right, times. That's right, that's right, three, of course. God, Which is, is just crazy. And now yeah. you have Dan Cates, Jungle Man, has won it Man. the last two years and says he's going to come in and win it three in a row. And I mean, what's crazy is, I mean, I think we have to believe him. It's not like he's taking any time off in between and he crushed it two years in a row. It's uh, it's, it's pretty sick. So uh, Daniel Cates came in, you know, he beat what Ryan Lang mm-hmm. two years ago. That was the hand where, Oh, that was a crazy Ryan Lang hand. And last year it was uh, Yuri. Yep. Um, man, I can't wait to see who he beats this time. Cause I think jungle man's going to take it down again. I can't wait to see what he dresses up as this year. Well, I can wait for that. That's uh, his, <laughs> I mean, if there's anyone who does costumes worse than Phil Helmuth, it's going to be Jungle Man, in my opinion. So I, uh, I'm not looking forward to his, his outfit. You know, we talked about uh, Johnny World, John Hennigan. Yeah. He actually won that event, too, back in 2014. And then I thought it was very interesting three years, uh, four years later, rather, in 2018, nearly won it again. He finished runner-up to Michael Mizrahi. Uh, so he was almost a two-time. And, of course, Johnny World, one of the best mixed game players in the world. Uh, if you had to pick somebody real quick this to win it this year, who do you like? Jungle Man, obviously. Yeah, Jungle Man. I'm 100%. gonna go. I want Todd Brunson to make a deep oh, run please, and win it for please. in honor of his father. Absolutely. All right. Let's wrap it up with Sean Deeb. Let's save the best for last. Sean Deeb wins bracelet number six. And I'm just so happy, man. I'm so happy. Yeah, it was uh, it was the fifteen hundred dollar eight game mix. This was the tournament I got to play in, mm-hmm. and it's crazy. You know, Deeb goes on to win this thing for almost two hundred k in his sixth bracelet, which really puts him in arified air in terms of poker history at the World Series of Poker. Yeah, of course, he's a very accomplished player outside the WSOP, even online, where he's been a crusher. I mean, Sean Deeb is one of the best players, poker players of all time. I honestly believe that, and he's doing this this summer while he's in this the midst of this weight uh, weight body percent. Uh, oh yeah, uh, uh, back it's with Bill, uh, Bill Perkins. Yeah, and so to come in here and try to balance that and play top notch poker, I know there are a lot of people who were concerned. Would he be able to do that? And here he is proving that yes, maybe he's not getting in the gym every day like he wanted to, but he's still crushing at poker and he's eating right. He's looking good. Uh, it seems like it's coming up all Sean Deeb right now. I went back through our Poker News photo album and I, the earliest picture I could find of Sean Deeb was from 2008 Aussie Million stuff, and it was so cool just like see the the, the uh, you know how he's evolved. Not only like in his in his wins and stuff, but just seeing. He's been, he's just, it's just been so much fun following the life of Sean Deeb. And to go over his six bracelets real quick, 2015, he wins the P, the Parliament Hold'em Championship. Uh, let's see, 2016, he wins a seven card stud. 2018, he wins a PLO eight handed high roller. 2018, again, he wins a second bracelet the same year, the 10K Big Blind Annie's No Limit Hold'em. Then in 2021, he wins the PLO again, the high roller. And then he wins, of course, this year. Plus, he won a circuit ring this year in That's the right. Turnstone main event. Yeah. I mean, what That's, a freaking crusher. He just, he's just been doing a great job for years and years, it's man. It's crazy to think he's won all of his bracelets since 2015. Yeah. I mean, has there been a better player in the last decade than Sean Deeb? I, I'd no. be hard pressed to find one. No, for real. All right. Well, that was a lot of fun. Thanks to you guys for, uh, for following our calling the clock and for uh, all this stuff. Chad's been good. Yeah. Let's bring in our guest. Go ahead. Jason Kuhn. Boom. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are with our guest this week, somebody I'm very excited to talk to, GG Poker Ambassador Jason Kuhn. Hey. Man, thanks for taking the time to join us. Of course, man. It's a crazy day, but I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Why is it crazy? We are 30 minutes away from the 250K, so you're just running in here. The, um, the buy-in process here is a little bit um, stressful at times. They have to verify every single cent you give them, no matter which way you buy in. So just get here and try to convince them that you're not a criminal, even though <laughs> some of us probably are, and oh, let no. them let us play the tournament. <laughs> you said uh, when we were arranging to get you on the show that this 250K is like your main event. Yes. What, what, can you explain that a little bit? Well, for a couple of reasons. Um, obviously, really love the high stakes stuff. That's what I pride myself on showing up and doing. Um, but this year is special for me because I don't get to play the main event. It's uh, mm. bittersweet. Um, my wife and I are expecting our second son in a week. Mm -hmm. Let's so, go. Congratulations. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm shutting everything down and going to be hanging out at the, the house and rooting for my friends to win bracelets this summer. So I got to ask, does this mean you're going to miss the main event from here on? Uh, no. With your kid? I mean, I mean, no, shit, once man. he's won, he can take care of himself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There you go. Right. I was going to say the last time you, when you had your first child is shortly after, shortly thereafter, you won your first bracelet. Yeah. I think he was like a week old or something yeah, crazy. Oh, Maybe three weeks too. Yeah. It was nuts. What was yeah. it like to win that WSOP bracelet in 2021, the 25 K heads up championship, kind of get that monkey off your back, so to speak. Yeah, it was amazing. I love heads up. Um, and you know, since I remember the, my first WSOP, I was like, I can't wait to get to play. I think it was a 10 K and then it, it was a crazy 25K one year, the year um, Jake Cody won it. It had, like, all these big personalities. Like, um, who, who was the uh, the recreational player that Jake got heads up with for the win? Uh, British guy. Just amazing, amazing guy. I'm um, not sure. Uh, yeah, well. I always look at the chat for names like that. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but it was, like, it was just deep. sick. It was, like, it was, like, prime time, like, watching these guys play heads oh, up. Man. And, yeah, to get to play that was was awesome. Although it was strange times because it was still kind of in the middle of COVID and, you know, there's yeah. some weird. Oh yeah. Weird we know. Shit going yeah. On. yeah. <laughs> no kidding. And you mentioned you've only played one other WSOP event this summer. No, no. I, well, I played one that partially on time. I showed up <laughs> almost on time for the hundred K. Okay. But the, I couldn't play the 50 K because I was, I was playing a cash game. And then the two twenty five Ks, I, I very, very late regged and had short sacks and busted and, you know, I wish I could be here doing it more. It's so much fun. And one of these summers, I'm going to commit the whole summer and just show up and grind everything. But right now, it's just my life is so chaotic. And I'm trying to do the best that I can to manage my time well. Yeah. Speaking of the way your life is chaotic and things, I read a really great old interview of yours from like 10 years ago in Cigar Aficionado. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Dude, that, was so, that was crazy. One of the things that stuck to me was you described going to Oahu, like, you know, you had busted out, you're in Florida, you decided to go out to, to Hawaii and yeah. that you, uh, you just decided to, to focus on surfing. Um, and then, so your whole thing was you just had to, you wouldn't leave till you caught a wave. Yeah. And it wasn't much of a wave that I caught and I got <laughs> racked over coral reefs and all kinds of things, but yeah, yeah you're, that's, an, that's but, awesome that you read that. I but, was really into that. But I want to ask you like the way your mind shaped it around that, like what's changed in 10 years? Like you were, you were in Florida playing the main, you know, playing the, the, yeah. the, 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 the WPT, I think it was, or, um, but then you it was decided Bay to stop. 101. I remember Bay, well, this. That's right. yeah, Bay yeah. 101. And then I went straight to Hawaii, did some skydiving and some surfing. And, um, what the main thing that changed between now and then was I've become much more systematic. I didn't really know the best way to prepare or the best way to learn back then, um, at least for my learning style. Yeah. And over the course of those 10 years, I've just um, been really blessed to have my eyes open in several different ways. And now I know the most useful ways to apply my time to prepare for future poker tournaments. And back then it was more guessy, feely, tricky. I just meant surfing wise. If you're a better oh. surfer. Just joking. Just joking. <laughs> just, well, joking. just get on it. And get on it and see what happens. <clears throat> yeah. Is, is there yeah. any any uh, tips or anything that you might give somebody? Because you went. I've known you for a long time. Long time. You know, and you've went from you know grinding poker tournaments yep. all the time, and now you're in the stratosphere. I mean, you're playing. I looked at your hand and mob. You haven't cashed a tournament that with a. Uh, buy-in of $10,000 or less since November of 2021, I think. Was. You're playing high rollers <laughs> all around the world and you're crushing them. Yeah. Uh, you know, is there something that would just kind of click for you? I know you just mentioned, you know, learning style and what have yeah. you, but like, can you give the viewers a little well, ins look inside your mind, so to speak? The first thing that I would say is the first hand of poker that I was ever dealt, I was in it. It was like nothing, I to this day, nothing I've ever yeah. experienced. The first hand, I was like, there's something different about this. I like it. And then like in a week I was better than all my friends. 
And in a month, I was like, <laughs> people were calling me a cheater. And then in six months, I was winning on the internet. So I will say, like, I've uh, never, like, a lot of these guys, I feel like were, like, extremely talented at chess or magic or other brain games. That wasn't it for me. Um, I'd never had anything like poker happen for me before. And I just kind of went into it because I like to do it. So I'd say my best advice is don't play poker to make money. Play poker because you're obsessed with it. And then from there, as you stay in the chair and you get more reps, you just have to iterate. You have to continually find people that keep you passionate, that push you. I mean, the, the most important thing in poker is res resiliency mm -hmm. and um, not doing stupid shit. Like <laughs> the best way that you stick around in poker is to not burn it all down, which yeah. is so easy to do. Things go hard for you and you just want to burn it all. The, um, you know, I think your history kind of compares parallels a lot with, with Doyle's history. You coming from the West Virginia, like I, you grew up on a farm, you know, like your history with your family sure. and stuff. I know Doyle grew up like in West Texas where like there was no, no electricity. Mm -hmm. He had to go outside in like the 30 degree weather to go use sure. the bathroom outside. And he said like, he just wanted to get away from that lifestyle. And he was get a sick runner. It, that's another yeah. weird. True. Yeah, he, he was an amazing, yeah. basketball amazing too. runner. He was, yeah. he was pursued by the Lakers. Yeah. You, you had the basketball, what, division three, you got a scholarship offer for or that's something right. like that. Yeah. yeah. So, but, but when it comes to Doyle trying to use poker to, get away from that lifestyle or use sports really like is that similar like is that what do you think drove you to learn or pursue poker so intently was to well, get for me i already had a way out i knew yeah. at a young age that i wanted to get out of being in poverty i yeah. knew that i hated it yeah. um and i was really driven to get my family out of poverty so i went to school i didn't really like finance but Everyone convinced me that was the best way to make a lot of money. So I got an MBA. I did the finance undergrad stuff. So I had that way out. And that yeah. was my plan was to use that to get out. But then poker kind of blew all that up. And I got a finance gig. And like a few weeks in, all I could think about was poker every single night. And I didn't have too much money. And I was like, maybe I have a gambling problem. Maybe I'm a degenerate. But I have my degree now. So I'm going to leave this job. And I'm going to see what happens. And, um, you know. It, it really, the main thing for me has always been after that, finding people to level me up, finding people that yeah. are good people that believe in me, that we can mutually benefit from one another and, and just soak everything in that I can around them. And, and I think that one of my greatest strengths as a poker player is I'm not very judgmental. I don't truly think that I'm part of one specific thought camp. I think that I'm a hybrid of a lot of different poker players that have inspired me. Some of them mm -hmm. only playing live poker, some of them only playing online poker, some of them being new school, some of them being old school. And I feel like each one of those people has given me an extra strength in my game. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, we have Sean Deeb on one end of the spectrum. He's got this weight loss bet going on. But if you go to the other end of the spectrum of fittest poker players, your name has always been there for a decade. And yeah. I remember in 2021, you had a, well, you offered a prop bet yeah. where you could run uh, a certain amount in like what, 10 seconds, something yeah, like under, that? Yeah, under 11 seconds, the 100 meter. And it's funny that you bring that up because I've, I, I, I'm not very public on social media anymore, but I've been training really hard for the last, um, it'd be 40 some weeks now. Um, and I have a great track here in Vegas. I have a great gym, Project Wellbeing, where we're all we're doing is sprint specific stuff. Devin Allen, um, an Olympic sprinter and Philadelphia Eagle wide receiver, is coaching me. Um, and it's going fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't done any races yet, but I'm very, very close to the time. Um, there is no bet, but Bill Perkins and I are good buddies. And we he said, Hey, you're only getting older if you hit this. Um, I there's this track that I train at, it's Palo Verde High School. And they need a new weight room. It's probably a couple hundred grand. So if I hit it, um, I've already made some donations to the school, but if I hit it, Bill and I are going to, we're going to donate to their weight room and see if we can redo it for them. So it's, That's a, awesome, it's kind of a win-win. If I do hit it, everybody gets a little, little boost. That's awesome to hear. Cause it, like, yeah. my question was going to be, was there ever a bet? And do you think you could do it to, you know, today? And obviously we got that answer. Yes, I think I can. Um, but I'm not going to say that I can until I just post a video of me doing yeah. it. Man, that's great. I yeah. wanted to get into um, what's something current with the uh, the community, you know, with, uh, like, I won't say specific names of apps and stuff, but with delays being removed from, sure. from poker trainers, um, there's been a lot of wonder about uh, both, like, what's available, what's 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 legal, I guess, here mm -hmm. on the table in live poker. But uh, we wanted to know about the Poker Integrity Council. Do you have any sort of updates yeah, so, based on all this stuff? Yeah, we've actually been hammering away lately. Um, that's one of the, another one of the reasons why I haven't been able to play a bunch of WSP events. 
Um, we've been working really hard at uh, doing a bunch of different investigations and and working towards strengthening GG security. Um, and we've had a, a lot of massive breakthroughs. And and I will say that um, we've got a really good grip on ways to combat and deal with these um, training tools that are being weaponized. You can't mm -hmm. necessarily be vocal about your methods publicly because you don't want to give the enemy an advantage. Sure. But I will say that um, I was really pessimistic about online poker. And after doing a ton of investigative work and seeing um, what can be done to stop it, online poker is much safer than, than you may think it is right now because all we hear is kind of gloom and doom right. about the guys multi-accounting and winning bracelets mm -hmm. or the you know the people rta and winning all this money online um all that stuff has happened for sure yeah but for the most part people are playing straight up man and in these cash games the highest stakes like a lot of these guys are just great players you know and the other thing that i would say is um poker tournaments are extremely nuanced and difficult to cheat at so like there is no bot that will give you the perfect solution for how to play a poker tournament. It's, they're just too dynamic and too difficult. Mm -hmm. um, so the PIC is doing our best to put our heads together and listen to the community and make adjustments to protect online poker. And, um, and yeah, we're having a ton of breakthroughs and, and we will have within the next 60 days, we'll have some public reports to share about some information that we've come across. Very cool. You know, you mentioned GG Poker. I know you're an ambassador for them alongside Daniel Negreanu. Yes, sir. Now, what's it like to represent GG Poker, which is one of the biggest online poker sites in the world? It is the biggest online poker site in the world. Yep, yep. Um, <laughs> it, it's an overwhelming feeling. Um, getting to know the company's philosophy and seeing their leadership, I have to admit, like, I've always been a workhorse. I've always been a person who's, like, really motivated to improve. Um, the... The fellow that runs GG is scary. He's like the most terrifying person I've ever seen. He's so hungry to conquer. And, um, and it's really, really inspiring and seeing um, all the new ideas that are coming along. And you, you guys are going to catch a ton of new news of, of um, big steps that GG is taking. But it's just, yeah, I mean, it's amazing. It's obviously cool to be uh, like I'm buddies with Negreanu and it's cool to be around him and be in the ears of all these guys. But it's really, really special to see a company kind of go from its infancy to just an absolute monster. I mean, GG's a juggernaut and it's only just going to get bigger. So it's, it's the right, uh, right side to be on. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. When do you turn 40? Um, if I you don't mind my asking. Well, I turned 38 August 14th. Right. So there you go. Oh, yeah. Do you, cause that's the age you have to be for uh, eligibility for the poker hall of fame. Oh my God. It's crazy to think, man. Yeah. Right. It's crazy to think I'm <laughs> like, I'm, like getting to the eligibility age Gosh. and, and like, yeah, I mean, obviously that's something that if I'm ever considered one day, that would be a dream come true for me. You know, I've been watching on poker just like you since the early two thousands and just a massive fanboy. And every time I get to play with the legends, um, you know, like, uh, it's heartbroken about Doyle passing. But one thing I was really happy about is we got to be buddies. You know, yeah. we talked, um, yeah. I got to hear a lot of stories from him. Another one of my buddies is Bobby Baldwin. It's like amazing to hear mm. him talk about vintage Vegas. And I'm just obsessed with old school Vegas, just like yeah. you are. Oh, you know? it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like I'm wrapped up in the history of poker. And, and I, I told my wife recently, I was like, it's, it's kind of crazy to think we're, we're part of it. You know, like mm -hmm. we're in the fabric of this now, like at least our little part, like seeing the Tritons grow and um, GG come about and, and play, starting from playing, you know, live tournaments at the world series that were thousand bucks or before that five hundred dollar right. tournaments or online tournaments three dollars um to be here and now playing the high stakes in the world i'm a part of that story and it's just it's really mind-blowing and it's not something that you think about you just do your job for years and years and years and you look up and you say whoa i did that you know yeah that's amazing man we're big into the poker history type of thing you got an old school hat on that's right you know right now we've got some stuff on the shelves uh, and it's great it's that appreciation <laughs> that i know uh, we really respect you know, you have, you mentioned Triton, you've been crushing it there. It's yeah. helped you amass, uh, you know, you've got 48 million in lifetime earnings, according to the Hendon mob, which places you fifth on mm -hmm. the all time money list. Do you have uh, any fifth? Yeah. Okay. Unless it changes. It cha it changes so often, yeah. it feels like, do you yeah, have any inkling for that top spot though? Um, I just don't think I'll ever be able to do it because I don't play the volume and my buddies like, like Steven Chidwick, Makita Bajikuski, those guys, they play every tournament and they're, the best players. And I just don't see why a guy like that or a guy like Ike um, mm -hmm. doesn't just hold the top spot because 
the thing with me is I love poker, but every year I'm like, I don't know how much longer I'm going to do this. Yeah. And then those guys are like, I'm going to do it forever. I'm going to travel and play every poker <laughs> tournament. So I just know it's not going to be me. It might be yeah. me for a year or something if they have one of these million buy-ins and right. I win it. But it's not going to be me in 10 or 15 years. Yeah, when you say, you know, how long are you going to be doing this? Is it, you know, when you talk to, you're going to having a family now, yeah. the traveling takes a lot out of it. You know, is it, is it something you like, you imagine one day you're just going to give up poker kind of altogether, or you think you'll always play, but just maybe not at the stakes and traveling as much? Yeah. So I, I'll always be a poker player. I'm obsessed with poker. Yeah. Um, I love it. I love teaching and I love talking about it. Um, it's just always going to take different shapes. You know, my life is already completely different than it was three years ago. I hardly travel for poker unless it's for a Triton. I play mm -hmm. cash games more than I play tournaments. Um, it's just a different, it's a, a different beast. And I know that I, I just always want to be open to evolving to situations in front of me and always be a poker player. But if something, you know, comes up and I feel like I need to apply myself to it, you're not going to see me grinding the tour, you know, right. it's just not something that's going to work for me. Well, Go ahead. Speaking of Triton, the stuff before we move yeah. on, um, you know, I was watching a few weeks back when the, you and Dan Smith were at the same table. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's so hard to really know like what, what's going on with, with these high six players' minds. We always see everybody often being very, very quiet, mm -hmm. but you were very outspoken about something yeah. he was doing. It's been a few weeks now. Um, can, do you have any new thoughts on? Yeah, for sure. So the first thing I would say is I was blatantly out of line there. I know a lot of people took my side and like, my point to certain to a certain degree was valid, but Dan's a friend of mine. He's been mm -hmm. a friend of mine for a long time. Um, he is a great poker player. He's a really good guy. Um, but sometimes, as you guys know, if you're 10 days into a poker tournament, yeah, exactly. stop, yeah. you're both beating each other up nonstop. You know, like sometimes your rivalries are like the heaviest with your friends. Yeah. And we get it. We yeah, do it you just go at it once in a while. Absolutely. And like, like, I know everybody, like, wants drama in the poker world, and they want people, like, jumping on top of each other. And, and the truth of it is, is, like, I screwed that up. I should have pulled him aside and, and, and talked to him about the feelings that I had. And that was a massive stage for him. And just for me to, like, overgeneralize how easy the spot was and just, you know, be fed up. It was just, I was tired. I was stressed yeah. out. I didn't have any, anything left in the gas tank. And I just kind of snapped on the guy. So um, fully take blame for that situation. And it's something that we worked out. I, you know, like I said, he's my pal. I drove over to his house, um, told him I was sorry and, and we're good. And That's I'm awesome. rooting for him. Yeah. And yeah. And just like, uh, I, I would say like, I, I know it's fun to just say people are wrong or right in all these situations, but it's just a spectrum of like, there's a lot of stuff going on, man. And we're like, it's pressure. Like every, you know, uh, these high rollers, people like, are like, oh, these guys are passing the money around. They don't have any pieces of themselves. It's like, buddy, if you only knew the swings, <laughs> yeah. you only knew the swings that we're dealing with. Like, yeah. look, we've all been playing nosebleeds for over a decade. If you think that Dan Smith is in there with 3% of himself, you got another yeah. thing coming. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So we're feeling it. And, and that's yeah. just the way, you know, it pops up once in a while. And, and I hope to do better in the future, but you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes you get weak. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much for sharing, man. That's yeah. Very, very authentic. And I appreciate it so much, dude. Sure. I know Gosh. you've got a big tournament to get to. Yeah, One more do. question yeah. before you do. Aside from yourself, if you had to pick somebody else to win this 250K <laughs> buy-in tournament, who, who do you like in this field? I mean, it's always kind of the same for me. Like, I, I think that the you can never say who the best player in the world is. It's always kind of a, like a rotating eight guys. Um, if I'm not in the tournament and I'm trying to bet my life savings on somebody, uh, Chidwick, um, mm. Makita, Nikki P is an mo absolute monster. I mean, all these guys are sick. Seth is sick. Yeah. Uh, Christoph. Uh, Ike is having an amazing year. Yeah. And it's just like, no Ike's the OG legend. Like, the ultimate, mm -hmm. in my opinion, like the ultimate poker player. So, any of those guys uh, would be up there for me. But yeah. it's who's feeling it, you know? Well, awesome. Jason, thank you so much for taking the time to join yeah. us. No kidding, dude. Good thank luck you. in the Thanks, tournament. Man. And for those of you watching, remember, we're recording new episodes every Tuesday and Friday from the 2023 World Series of Poker. So be sure to tune in twice a week for the Chad and Jesse Poker Show on pokernews.com.